Hey everybody and welcome back to part two. I'm excited to dive in where we left off talking about how understanding Holy Spirit's role in our life will change us forever. So thank you so much for coming back and I hope you enjoy the rest of this video that I did on mental health. So in 2 Corinthians 3.17, talking about the Spirit, and he's like, this is so cool. For if, <laughs> I'm sorry if this is too much scripture reading, this is just who I am. But if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, so he's like trying to draw this in huge comparison, was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect. What remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses who put a veil on his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away, but their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil oh, remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is liberty. <laughs> but we all with unveiled, but we all in Christ with unveiled faces, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. If that does not blow your mind. The gift that we have been given, the spirit of the Lord who brings freedom, who unveils our minds so that we can experience the full glory of the love of God, the love covenant, Jesus, righteousness, weak and total. This is a promise. This is why he says that we have so much hope that we can speak with boldness because we understand. They couldn't. They could not understand. And yet we have been given this beautiful promise, the promise of the Holy Spirit. <sighs> I knew uh, a couple months leading up to um, when this happened that I needed to start dealing with this fear thing. That I had been living with it and I like needed to just deal with it. And that was my perspective. I was like, I just need to deal with this. It wasn't that I didn't think it could be dealt with. It was just, I just was lazy. And I was like, well, it's easy to live with because it's not a perpetual consistent thing that goes on. I would just be overcome with fear if I was alone. I lived in my own apartment by myself. So when Tim would leave, it, the, that is when I would be like, oh yeah, I really hate being alone at night. <laughs> I hate it, it's dreadful, I don't like it. And I would exhaust myself to sleep, so I would just binge watch stuff until I fell asleep. All the doors would be open so I could see into the darkness <laughs> and lights would be on. And that is how I, could, how I would fitfully fall asleep every time he left. And I just never even talked to him about it because he'd come home and I'd totally forget. It's the wildest thing. And even though I know verses like perfect love casts out fear and all of these things, I just wasn't uh, enough for me to really do anything. I had been thinking, gosh, I should probably deal with this. And I had heard, you know, the area where you have fear in is an area God hasn't loved you in. And I was seeing people posting like, I had a dream, a scary dream. So I'm going out and doing what what scared me in my dreams and my mom was like out doing things that scared her she'd walk out at three and three in the morning and she'd you know full of confidence because we're not supposed to live in fear and I was like ah oh, I should probably do this so my fear really was spiritual fear like demons and stuff like I don't know why because if we were to have a conversation and we were to talk about demons I'd be like oh yeah defeated like have no authorities you know ridiculous stupid like i've come into contact with like a demonic manifestation it you know it's fine my brain is pretty imaginative <laughs> and so i would just have t just really terrible imaginings about um, the demonic realm tim left and that first night i did what i normally do i exhausted myself into sleep and the next day i had sean bowles on and he was t giving a testimony and his testimony was really cool and he was going into this building that was um, haunted. So they called him in to exercise 
the place and so he's praying with all these the board members or whatever of the owners of the building and um they're he's like holy spirit what do i do and i just love the intimacy with holy spirit holy spirit what do i say and the holy spirit told him what to say and he said the only spirit here the only spirit allowed here is the holy spirit and from that day on, they never had any more demonic activity. And for some reason, that finally clicked in my brain. I was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? What am I doing? God is for me. Like who gives a rip about any any other spirit? And so I didn't even say anything. I just had freedom in, in my spirit. I just had freedom. Like whatever stronghold was there, I I it was unveiled, like, like an unveiled face. I was like, whoa personal revelation okay wow i'm going to sleep really good tonight and i just knew i was going to sleep so good i was excited actually there was joy that came with the freedom that's how you know you have freedom is because joy's there <laughs> because before you don't even know that joy is suppressed until you're free and then you're like oh my gosh this is a whole new way of living that night i slept with all the lights off and i slept great so the next day, I was kind of bummed because Tim was coming home that night. And I was like, dang, I want one more night by myself. <laughs> I just want to show the devil I'm free, you know? That day, I took a nap. I experienced a sleep paralysis, like torment. So basically, I took a nap and then I woke up, but I couldn't move. And I was still like in a dreamlike state. And I just heard the buzzing of electricity and there was like lightning, like blue lightning flashes in the other room. And I was trying to get up and open my eyes and and get in there or whatever but i couldn't move i was just like and it was tor it was torment i don't know how long that lasted but in my brain i'm like there's no spirit but the holy spirit in my house like that's what i was thinking i couldn't move and then i just said in my brain out loud <laughs> i was like holy spirit you need to wake me up right now and i said it with that attitude too <laughs> i was just like this i'm not putting up with this and i immediately sleep paralysis went torment went and i got up and i was like I really, this is how I felt. Nice try. That night I went to bed, all the lights off, the doors closed because Tim called me and said, hey, we're delayed. We're not gonna get back tonight. And I was like, good. I was, <laughs> I was like, because I've been, I wanted another night by myself. So in that time of being free of fear, I talked to my, I was talking to my mom about it and just like how when fear is uprooted out of one area of your life, you see little, little tendrils of where the fear has shown itself in other areas. I was just like meditating on this fear thing and I realized that freedom is not being absent of the problem. Freedom is being free no matter what situation you're in. Freedom is not situational. Freedom is freedom. Blanket, period, that's it. I realized that I was not free because the Holy Spirit kicked other spirits out of my house. I was not free because there weren't spirits in my house. I was free because even if there were spirits in my house, I would not be afraid. That is freedom. That is the revelation. God loves me so much. I want to encourage you to go to the Holy Spirit. You, you go to the Holy Spirit. You go to the Word. You pray, you begin to cultivate intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Stop saying, I have anxiety. Your vernacular is going to show who owns your tongue. Does fear and anxiety own your tongue? Or does the Holy Spirit own your tongue? How you believe, what your perspective on whatever issue is in, in, in your life, that shows where your belief is. That shows where you're trusting. When we actually believe God, we trust Him. And when we trust Him, there is peace. There is peace. Even if you're in the middle of a panic attack, you can believe and know that God is loving me through this and that I'm going through this to a different stage of life. I'm not going to stay in for the rest of my life. I deal with, I've dealt with anxiety my whole life. I'm a Christian, God still loves me, whatever. It's like, yeah, yeah, he does, but there's freedom. I can't handle when people say, <laughs> or they make it sound as if God in the sacrifice of Jesus is not enough for complete freedom. I know the character of God. I've experienced his love and I experience him. His character is 100% trustworthy. Who he is is 100% trustworthy. He is not a liar. He does not um, dangle a carrot of freedom in front of your face to teach you something. He, that is not who he is. He is a black and white God. He is, this is truth. 
these are lies. If you feel like you're in a gray area, then you need to ask the Holy Spirit to lead you into truth because he would not tell you that the Holy Spirit would guide you into truth unless there was truth to be found. People can help you on your road to your freedom. This video, I hope, helps. But I'm not gonna be in your life 24 seven, but the Holy Spirit will be. The Holy Spirit is. I had someone tell me I need to go to deliverance to be free from fear. And this was like after I was free from fear. And I was like, you do not need deliverance. <laughs> I'm not bashing deliverance. God will use anything. God gave you the authority, the Holy Spirit, the word. What you need is intimacy with the Holy Spirit. What you need is him to replace lies with truth. We think that all of these strongholds in our life are like these huge things and, and Jesus needs to come in and, and wrestle them to the ground. We think in this in, in our in our minds that when we come to Christ, all of these strongholds that we're on this side, stronghold, 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 stronghold. And here's here's Jesus. We have to uh, 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 figure out how to get get that intimacy with Jesus by going through all the strongholds. What we don't understand is that when we get saved, the power of the strongholds are already gone. They're, Jesus and you come like this. Okay, so now it's Jesus and you. And all these strongholds have no power except for what you give them. And so when you come up against, a, up against where maybe you used to have a stronghold, let us say <laughs> that pornography has you, had you before you got saved. Well, you're a new creation, new creature. I believe 100% you can be completely free from any desire for pornography as soon as you tra be, are transformed by the gospel. You're walking up, you and Jesus. This is how it is, it's not this, it's this. And you come to pornography and you have a choice to, to reestablish that as a stronghold or you have a choice to say, Holy Spirit, what do you say about this? And he replaces the lie of pornography with the truth of purity and holiness. And then you move on. That is what it looks like to be in relationship with the Holy Spirit who's leading you into truth. It's as simple as replacing the lie with the truth. If you don't understand that you house the answer because of the Holy Spirit, then we will always be dependent upon going to somebody else for the answer when the Holy Spirit is the one who gives it to us. Don't be intimidated by the diagnosis. The doctor is literally telling you what they're seeing in your mind at this present moment, but that doesn't have to be your life. That doesn't have to be a, a part of your identity. I've seen so many cr Christians hashtag their mental health disorder as a part of their identity. That is not how it should be. We should be hashtagging our freedom and our identity with Christ. And we should be dealing with issues. We should not be living with them. I wanna encourage you, God loves you so, so much. Let him love you in whatever area you're struggling with and find true freedom because God's character is trustworthy. He is trustworthy. Get out there and be free free. Don't just wish other people free. You be free because you can. I love you guys. I hope that this was encouraging. You can decide to be free and to stop living with whatever you're living with that is less than what Jesus paid for. That is good news, friends, and that's the gospel. Okay. Bye. <laughs> You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me When the road looks rough ahead And you're miles and miles from a nice warm bed You just remember what your old pal said Boy, you've got a friend